Hello everybody, my name is Daniel Richardson and I'm the WCPW Review Guy and this is a show that uh, Vince McMahon himself has said uh, can't be reached for comment. So, we are here with the Loaded Episode 9 Review. Boom! What a night it was! Let's just kick it right off. Uh, and I'll just go through the general, you know, hot crowd, excellent commentary. I mean, it, it, it's the same every week. Like seriously, the crowd never cools off and the commentary just gets better and better. Uh, first match was a five-way. You call it Fatal Five-Way? Freaky Five-Way? I, I don't know what you call Five-Way. I know it's a Fatal Four-Way. Five-Way, I think they just say fuck it, it's a Five-Way. Five-Way match. You had Travis Banks, uh, Pete Dunn, uh, Marty Scroll, Will Ospreay, and Martin Kirby. Uh, this match was freaking insane. Like it, The wrestling was great, the comedy was perfect, it was just great all around. Dude, I am a huge fan of Pete Dunn. Like, I, I'm just like in love with this dude. This dude is just freaking awesome. Like, flat out awesome. Uh, just love his style. He's like a Fit Finley, William Regal hybrid. I mean, he just has this kind of unorthodox fighting style. It's just a lot of brawling, mixed with some technical skills. I mean, the kid's great. I really hope to see some great things from him in the future. Uh, of course, you know, Marsh Grohl and uh, Will Ospreay was just, you know, Incredible. Uh, I still need to see some of their other matches. I, I, I'm, I'm stuck in the WCPW right now. I need to venture out and see their stuff. So, Because uh, I hear their other matches were just phenomenal. Uh, I, Travis Banks, I don't know how to feel about him. Like These five guys... Of course, you know, fucking Martin Kirby's Martin Kirby. He's just great. Uh, you know, Mark Scroll and uh, Will Ospreay have their feud, and they're both just phenomenal. They stand out. Uh, Pete Dunn, to me, I mean, you just look at the guy, you just see, you know, he just has this really odd charisma about him. I love it. But, like, Travis Banks, to me, is just the most, and I don't mean this in any disrespectful way, dude's a great wrestler. He just seems so generic to me. Like, there is nothing about him that's really standing out at all, at least, at least to me. Um, so, I don't know. I, I haven't quite got on board with the Travis Banks movement or whatever's going on with him uh, yet. But, uh, no. Uh, all the matches, dude, the spots, I love the, uh, when they're all, like, trying to put on, like, a different submission move, like, I forget who tried to, I think it was, uh, Travis Bank tried to throw, a uh, Marty Scroll into a surfboard, and then Will Ospreay countered from an octopus hold, and <laughs> Kirby came in, and he threw on, like, a cross face on, uh, whoever's on the ground, and then Pete Dunn comes in, you're like, what's he going to do? He just says, fuck it, he just hits a guy, which I freaking loved. Uh, you got Kirby doing the, whoop, 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 you know, the crab walk thing, and, Everybody just rolls out one after another. I thought it was just great. Uh, when they're all laid out and they're all like, every time someone gets knocked down, someone else will go to the top, hit a move, and then he'd miss. And then you get to Marty Scroll, his last one, and he's like, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. He gets up there and he just drops down and, you know, kicks the eye or whatever. Just brilliant stuff. Uh, I love the head scissor gag where, you know, he had all, everybody doing a head scissor onto another. Uh, a human centipede thing, like uh, Alex Shane said, and then of course Martin, uh, or uh, yeah, Martin Kirby decides that you know what, I'm gonna go different with this one. He grabs whoever is at the bottom of the chain and puts him in a Boston crab, and then flipping everybody over at once. Dude, just thought like that was just great. Uh, everybody got their stuff in. Everybody looked great in this, and I finally get my wish. After months of hearing Kirby yell out "Sable Bomb," he finally hits one, pinning Pete Dunn and winning the five way. Incredible, my match of the night right there, the five way. Uh, it was awesome, and that's the way you, because I mean, once again, I'm all for pushing the guys who are, I don't want to say regulars, because I know even the ones who leave, they come back or whatever, but I am just glad that, you know, Kirby, who's been like, you know, homegrown, if you will, in WCPW is getting the push, so I'm glad he got it. I hated he pinned Pete Dunn. I was just like, pin Travis Banks. Like, for me, I was just like, pin him. Like, I want to see Pete Dunn keep going, but, uh, but no, other than that, great match. It really was, so big thumbs up on that one. Uh, and then, of course, later on, and I'm going out of sequence with a lot of the backstage stuff. I'm just going to kind of hit them as they apply to what I'm talking about. But uh, Will Ospreay, of course, he's going back to Japan. Uh, he's got prior commitments there, but he said he's going to definitely come back in probably November, and he wants his rematch against Martin Kirby. And I, I love that. Like, I love that now it's 
Will Ospreay, which, you know, if you ask anybody outside WCPW, obviously they're going to say, well, he's the better one. But here in WCPW, you know, Will Ospreay, he, he's down two right now. Like, he's just trying to, you know, to beat him. So I think that's just excellent and definitely build up a storyline there. So good stuff right there. Uh, next match, we got uh, Moose versus Drew Galloway. You know, Moose is a good wrestler. I, I, I just kind of feel bad for him because I'm just like, he's only popular in WCPW because his name is Moose and the crowd likes to chant Moose. It has nothing to do with him at all. Like, literally... And it's sad because he is a good wrestler, but just like, I think the fans just like saying Moose more than they actually like the wrestler Moose. So, uh, and this match, it wasn't bad. It was a different, you know, slower pace, and it's always tough when you go from a really fast paced match to a slower paced match. At least for me. I'm not saying for anybody else, I'm just speaking for myself, but when, I'm, when I make that, you know, rough transition, I just always like, oh, wow, this, this, this isn't quite as exciting as the last match. So I try to take into account, like, okay, it's a different kind of match. These are two big powerhouses instead. Uh, still, when I compare it to the other rest of the card, I got to say my least favorite match. It wasn't bad, uh, but it was just it was just more slow pace. Uh, it did pick up toward the end. I loved the ending when it was just like they were throwing everything they could at each other, like all their signature moves and finishers, and nothing was getting the job done. Like everybody you know, kept kicking out. Uh, Drew Galloway walks away with the win, so, which really surprised me because I'm just like with the Moose's popularity, or at least with the name popularity, I figured he'd win, but no, Drew Galloway gets it, so uh, good right there. Uh, we also uh, were introduced to, uh, you know, we're going to have a women's tag match, first one ever in WCPW. The women's division is finally expanding. We went from two to four. Yeah. Uh, so we are introduced to uh, Alex Windsor, and uh, she is villainous. She's teaming up with B Priestley. I just thought it was funny that the, the interview, she was just like, you've never faced, it, like, the whole time she was just like running down Nixon Newell. She's like, you know, you've never faced me. I'm going to take the title. I'm going to do what no one else could do. And it's like, you're doing what no one else could do. That just means one person. That's B, who's standing right next to you. But uh, other than that, like I said, it, I, I was looking forward to this match. Uh, so the next match, it was uh, B Priestley and uh, Alex Windsor versus Nixon Newell and Little Miss Roxy, which according to the commentator, she's uh, the rookie of the four. She just kind of started training not too long ago. And uh, yeah, she's fresh out and ready to go. Um, I follow both of them on Twitter. So I was kind of familiar with these you know girls going in, but not so much with their wrestling, more just, you know, their Twitter presence, I guess. Uh, however, uh, the match was really good. Like I said, you can tell that uh, Little Miss Roxy probably is the rookie because, I mean, you know, her moves weren't quite as smooth, but you can't really fault her for that once again. She's just starting out. She's still green. Uh, the match itself was really good. Uh, like I said, you get uh, Nixon and B in there anytime. It's just good. And uh, Alex, you know, she, she definitely impressed me as well. Uh, so damn good tag match uh, with B and uh, oh, Alex going over. So, uh, yeah, not much I can say about it, but it was entertaining. And, uh, can't wait to see. I, I'm, they're definitely going to be building toward a uh, Alex and uh, Nixon match, which I'm looking forward to because I really dig. The, I like uh, Alex style. She just has she is like a power style in there, and I really like that. So, uh, so yeah, women's match really good. We've got a couple backstage segments here. We got uh, Jack the Jobber who just literally he, he just comes off so creepy. I, I, I'm not gonna lie because uh, he went from like being like this little kind of runty manager and. Uh, but he now he's just hit on anything with a vagina, which is very creepy. Uh, and you know he's trying to make it like look against innocent. But anyways, he's back there trying to throw support to Susie, uh, and then of course Primate you know catches the act and just chases him right out of the building. I can't wait to see where that leads right there. Uh, I, I I try to vote for the good guys, but I, I just want to see Jack Jarber gets pummeled by Primate because I like Primate, and so see him get boost there and just pummel the shit out. Jack Jobber will be hilarious. Uh, and then uh, we get a Rampage who, uh, before the match, his main event match, uh, went back and destroyed the Prospect, or sorry, uh, Los Prospectiva. Uh, oh, you shouldn't treat our outside talent. You guys are guests in WCPW and Rampage just tears through him. Poor guys. Uh, so anyways, but yeah, so that was the setup to the match. And of course the main event, no holds barred, and the uh, pile driver is legal. We got uh, Big Damo with Adam Blompier in his corner going up against Rampage. And, uh, yeah, really good match. I mean, once again, this had a good story going into it, like I said. So, uh, even if it, it is, like, not the fast-paced, exciting match, it still had a great story going into it. And I just love both wrestlers. I think they're both great. Uh, so, seeing them both, you know, just pummel shit out of We had a huge opening brawl, uh, you know, into the crowd. He broke the barricade by, you know, cannonballing himself into uh, Damo into Rampage. Good stuff. They both went for the, uh, the pile driver. And I didn't mention this last week, but uh, last week, or maybe the week before, I can't remember. One week's 
It had to be the week it was stacked when uh, they hit the suplex on the ramp. And I'm thinking to myself, like, dude, that just looks like it fucking hurts. Like, I know you see the ramp on Raw a lot, but this is, I mean, I don't know, that, that ramp, which I'm sure is probably just as hurtful, but this is just like fucking graded metal. Like, it just looks like that would just hurt so bad. Like, I just imagine, like, you get suplex on a thing, it scratches your back up. It just fucks you up all all around. And the way Rampage landed was just kind of because he went right sideways. I'm just like, ah, oh, that just like you hit your elbow and shit. Nah, nah. It looked painful as fuck. Uh, but this match, you know, really good. You got Blompier being the excellent heel manager. I'm kind of wondering, like, what's he gonna do now? Now that uh, I mean, I'm sure he's gonna try to rebuild up BX a little bit because you know. Even though he does have prospect, I guess, in this corner, you know, they're being used more as comedic heels right now. And, you know, he needs that serious, you know, dominant threat. And, of course, the rumor now is that Damo's going to be maybe on the NXT soon. So, it's like, what's he going to do now? Uh, however, uh, in this match, uh, back and forth action until uh, the end when the Rampage uh, fucking pile drove uh, Big Damo down, took him down. One, two, three, it's over. And I just love the scene at the end when, like, you know, you got Blompier over there. I don't, I don't know if he was hiding or if he was still just kind of dazed from being shoved out of the way earlier, but he just grabs him by his foot and yanks him back to you, like, raw power. And I was like, oh shit, Blompier's gonna get his now, but wasn't to be, wasn't to be. And uh, Blompier runs away and then Rampage uh, celebrates up on the ramp. So uh, that was loaded. Uh, damn good match. Like I said, I am never disappointed with an episode loaded. I've yet to be disappointed yet. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you, when, you know, when it, if there's an episode that I'm just like, didn't quite feel it, I'll let you know. But so far, it's not the case. Uh, like I said, awesome, excellent opening match. Uh, everything else is doing good. I, I, said, I, I just kind of feel like the Moose Galloway match, not only was it just kind of like a slow-paced match, I don't know what it's building toward. Like, you know, EC3 was like, you know, he kind of came in, I don't know if I want to call him a face or not, but he seemed like he was more good guy, but it seemed in the Rumble he was going heel. So I would have loved to see, you know, more of him trying to, you know, I guess go heelish and, you know, do something. It just seemed like Moose and Gallery, they have really nothing for them. So it's just almost like a TNA exhibition match, which is kind of why I guess it's also low on my list. But uh, glad to see the women's division growing. Oh, and I forgot to mention, they also showed uh, at the very uh, top of the program, uh, and I don't know what, I can't remember what the name of the fest was. I want to say like McMillan Fest or some shit like that. It's a music fest over in uh, the UK. And, uh, Oh, Joe Hendry is up there, and he was presenting the band. It happens to be the band, I think it's Shattered Dreams, that uh, does uh, Joseph Connors' uh, theme music. Connors runs out, beats the shit out of him, which I thought was kind of odd. Like, the, the crowd, like, no reaction from the crowd at all. Like, they're just too cool for wrestling, I guess. They're just like, eh, we're here for music. But anyways, Connors beats him down, which is just fucking awesome. He's like, play my music, which is just great. So, uh, but yeah, no, overall, excellent episode loaded, so... It's going to be awesome. So, uh, can't wait to see what happens next week. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got. So, guys, uh, check it out if you haven't already. There's no way you're watching this video and you haven't watched it. But if somehow you're just like, you get a chance to watch it, check it out. Especially that first match. If anything else, watch the Fatal 5 way because it was just brilliant all around. So, all right, guys, that's all I got. Go over and tune in to later on today. I'll be doing the top 10. Uh, we got a lot of changes in the bottom part. So, uh, yeah, definitely want to tune in for that, see what's going on. So, uh, guys, share and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, show this video that thumb and love. Oh, wait, my. That thumb and love. I didn't think you guys heard me or not. Microphone pulled away. It's totally plugged in. Uh, and of course, uh, you know. Oh, yeah, follow me on Twitter. There it is. I knew there was one more thing I had to throw in there. Twitter, WCPW Review Guy 1. Guys, that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, yeah, until next time.